Welcome back, and we join our expert military and geopolitical analyst, Tim Alexander, looking from the point of view of a believer, but also an insider who knows how the world works and the evil meshings of the gears of the New World Order. What's the latest, Tim? Because we've got, uh, you know, as much as we think from day to day and week to week that things can't get worse, we wake up, our rub our eyes, wash our faces, go and work out, take our showers and say, oh my gosh, it's worse. I wake up this morning and I discover that yesterday the breakage of the pipes at San Onofre, and they had a hot reactor shut down last year that spiked the radiation. They had a major release of radiation there, and they're not telling the local public hardly anything. I have an article posted up here from the Orange County Register. It's just one of many things, and the globalists are pushing for a third world war, which will be triggered by a war against Syria and Iran, which will cause a civil war and a major conflict, and they don't even take into account the fact that now they're pushing the Iranians and and the medians together with the, which is the old Rambo prophecy, and we're going to have an expert talking about that in a few weeks. Uh, This is craziness, and even the Russians and Chinese are begging Europe and the West, don't do this, but they're not stopping, are they? Well, you, uh, if you look at it analytically, strategically, it really makes no sense. Uh, uh, and, and the people that are pushing this, uh, they're, they're fall into two categories. The global banking cartel families, uh, because they, over a hundred years ago, uh, there was this document, it was published, uh, it was, uh, right out in the open in the British Museum until Lord Rothschild got on the board of directors and then it disappeared. Uh, but from uh, Pike, Albert Pike, the former Confederate general uh, who was a Satanist, and uh, yeah, they they said there would be three world wars. The first would be to destroy the uh, the Tsar's empire, and the uh, second would be. Uh, to uh, you know, tear up uh, Europe and and, and uh, monarchy in most places and so forth, and also to establish uh, a Zionist state in uh, the Middle East, and then the third would be between the Zionists and the Muslims, and uh, these wars were, are designed uh, to move uh, the world to a new world order where. Religion will be effectively amalgamated into something that's really satanic, uh, and that they'll have total control. And we seem to be heading in that direction. But you know, you, you, when you have families like the Rothschilds that count their wealth literally by the trillions, you, you have to say, why would you want to blow up the world? Because you know, uh, you have so much of it. Uh, it's not like you're some poor rice farmer in the middle of nowhere that uh, is lucky if he gets a fish head uh, a couple times a week with his rice to eat. You're on top of the world. Why do you want to blow it up? And uh, particularly with 21st century weapons. And then well, we have to ask, uh, insert the question, and I want you to continue. Why would you nominate a candidate who says, I'm pro life like Romney and Ginrich, and yet they want to bomb Iran? Knowing that the biological uh, all, weapons will lie. kill you and your family. <laughs> and that's Knowing. a classic example. Knowing that the uh, biological weapons they'll re- re- release on response to annihilating their family and their country will destroy you and your family and your country. Well, you, you, the, the, you. these people are evil, and Satan blinds his minions to doing his will. And these people are pushing for a war that will basically destroy them. Themselves. Yeah, this will make, this will make and the Yahoo and, and, and yeah. Lieberman and Brock, they're, they're sitting over in Israel doing everything they can to get NATO, to get the United States to go to war against Iran and Syria. And uh, well, when that happens, what's going to happen is Israel is going to be wiped off the, the face of the earth. And that. <laughs> To and, and, some and so people will in the global banking cartel, that's an acceptable sacrifice. And, acceptable and it'll take, a, by sacrifice. the way, it'll take a while, but America will too. Uh, as I've said already, if America attacks Iran, and this is not just Dr. Deagle's opinion, this is a thus saith the Lord, if America makes a preemptive attack on Iran, and it may take a years, may even have a, a kind of a hiccup in the middle of a, of a peace treaty, which is we know it's coming, but we know that ultimately, if America attacks Iran and moves with this satanic regime of the global bankers toward doing this, it'll be the end of America. It'll cease to exist. 
and most of the citizens living here will die a horrifying death in a thermonuclear, biological, and scalar war that will make all the previous plagues and all the wars in history look like a garden party. Well, that's actually written pretty much uh, in the Bible. I mean, the Bible says a third will die of plague. Well, that sounds like advanced bio war to me, and a third will die of wormwood. Wormwood is the translation of the of a name of a village in Ukraine, and we all know that village. The name is Chernobyl. Right, isn't that wild? And in fact, the word wormwood, and this is, this is how, how omniscient and omnipotent God is, the word wormwood is the bitterness that was in the waters that was going to basically kill all the Israelites unless God gave a supernatural way to take the bitterness out of the water, Moses and all the Israelites would have died in the desert. Well, and, God knows everything in heaven in eternity all that was is all that is is and all that will be is god is a that even the name of at even, no level that god doesn't know yeah and even the name of of jesus biological mother mary her name mary means bitterness so jesus was literally born of bitterness and unless we repent of the bitterness the sin that's in our world which are by voting or not for the for say Obama or a war candidate in the Republican Party, you're voting for the death of the future. You're voting for the child that has birth defects. You're voting for annihilation. You're voting for Obamacare. You're voting for the loss of all it, it, sovereignty it, of human species. It's amazing to me in 2012 when this country has gone so far down the road to its self-destruction the industrial base is sitting in china and other third world countries uh enormous numbers of people are out of work underemployed the young people basically have no hope and yet people continue to support uh, the usual type of candidates, whether it's uh, Romney or Newt Gingrich or, or these clowns. They're, they they, they right. are a continuation, and then they get up, oh, we've got to have jobs, we've got to have this. It's all BS. And they also uh, turn the other way when they have a pipeline of intelligence information and industrial espionage. I was reading this morning today on the Reuters News about Mr. Liu and his wife who were charged because they're working directly with the People's Republican Army to steal technology from microwave technology and from DuPont Corporation for making titanium oxide type white paints. Now people might think that's oh, a minor thing. Uh, the cost, uh, the actual profit from the patented technology that America has for that one company was six billion a year. The average leak of, of high technology just out of Canada is estimated to be over a billion dollars a month in high technology stolen just from Canada by the Chinese alone. And the Chinese are the number one. Their plan eventually is to invade North America. And we're making it real easy because we're giving them the weapons of war and the technology. We're transferring our industry there. <clears throat> and yet, there are more people studying science and engineering in China than have ever been scientists or engineers in all of history in all countries on earth combined well they have more engineers graduating by the way all of the major politicians including the current uh, head of the country and a new head coming to replace the other one are all engineers so when the people's republican army senior technicians which are also their politicians meet with our politicians our politicians are almost university lawyers their politicians are almost always engineers that's, that should tell you something. Yes, lawyers tend to deal in BS, and engineers tend to deal in facts. Uh, the fact, the my fact is they're stealing, our, like that, they they're, they're, they're stealing us blind, and we're allowing it, and we're also not directing our children. For example, I believe public education, right, whether you're going to Harvard or wherever, if you have the ability, you should be able to get into any school in an open competition, not dependent on your income. The idea that our children are being saddled with monstrous debt to get a higher education is one of the reasons why we're committing political suicide and engineering and economic suicide, where in China they support education. That's why they have such a giant deposit of new engineers taking over the business of manufacturing everything on Earth. We have some major news and updates on San Onofre, and of course, it's the uh, title of the article, and we're going to go over it in a few minutes with uh, Chris Harris, our nuclear safety expert. Bad news, worse as San Onofre as pipe defects found in both units. 
Uh, let's continue with our news stories with Tim first, and then we're going to yeah, spend yeah, quite a bit we'll, of time on this. We'll knock a couple of these out. Uh, Pandadar, the uh, U.S. Secretary of Defense, uh, is on record now as saying he believes Israel will attack Iran uh, sometime between April and June of this year. Yeah, but how can Israel attack without our say-so? They're basically well, acting like know, the war game. This is this old game that a Yahoo plays. Hold me back, hold me back. I'm about ready to attack them. Uh, we are moving in an insane amount of land, air, and naval forces as our other NATO nations. That's a go-ahead into the Middle that's East. A, that's a we're, we're getting ready. This is the same type of buildup we did for the first uh, Gulf War and the Iraq War. This is not going to be a, 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 a cakewalk. This is going to give you a whole oh, different is, game. Uh, it, it, well, I, I have a, a, an article that I posted uh, today. Uh, war on Iran and Syria, what they are not telling us. And this is on my news blog, uh, Europe. Just do Google search, large sterling Europe. Uh, basically, if uh, we attack Iran, and I mean if we hit them or Israel or a combination, if they're hit really hard, they're going to respond just like America would respond if we were attacked really hard, whether nukes are used or not. I'm 61 years old, and the basic strategy, uh, it's been known my whole life. If you come and bomb America, if you attack America, America's response is we're going to shower uh, thermonuclear warheads on your country, and we're going to kill everybody there, and there will be a sea of green radioactive glass. And if you have nukes and you do that to us, well, then we'll both die. That's called mutually assured destruction. Right. Now, Israel or Iran does not have nukes, but what they do have is this advanced uh, biological program, warfare program that they essentially bought from the Soviet Union when it was collapsing by hiring all their top people. And they, if you push them up against a wall, and when it looks like you're going to do a Libya and an Iraq on them, and you're going to kill their leadership, you're going to destroy their people. A million and a half people have died in, in Iraq yeah. since we invaded. So, you know, what are they going to do? They're going to do exactly what we would do or any country would do. They, were, they will hit back with everything they've got. If they do that. We're going to lose probably a third of the North American and European population. Yeah, here's the point. Why why would we keep on pooing material when Mr. Obama says he's a man of peace? Maybe he means pieces of nations and pieces of people. <laughs> because the fact that we're moving our material, the Israelis say, that's a green light. America's there. And the big reason why they stopped this war game was real simple. They basically said, the Israelis said, we want to be the boss, and you, America, you're going to do what we want to say. This is our land and our territory, so we're calling the shots. The yeah, American general said, not, it's smaller than Rhode Island, but they're going to call the shots to the world superpower. Right, that's, and that's, that's, that's the reason why the war game is allowed. When you deal with Netanyahu yeah. and those yeah. characters. He, he's not, they call them nuts and yahoos, what the Israelis don't like them. The thing is, now, in, in, uh, in, in, before we run out of time here, and I tell you, Chris has got some really hot stuff to talk yeah. about. Uh, I do want to uh, mention is, that in Europe, things are really beginning to get bad. Uh, according to Eurostat, and that's the European Union's official s statistical office, 16.3 right. uh, million people are out of work in the 17 countries that have joined the uh, Eurozone. Uh, it's basically a lost generation, and it's becoming the, the, a, a major scandal, you know, in a sense, for, for the EU. In Spain, 51.4% of those aged 16 to 24 are jobless, over half. Now, that's not, of course, many of the other people are only working part-time, but these are people who are totally 100% jobless, and it's 51.4%. And Greece, the figure is 43%. I mean, you you have a tinderbox in Europe of young people who want to start their lives, fall in love, get married, have kids, and they can't even get a job flipping burgers. Right. Now that when you're young, I mean, and, and you're 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 full of life and vigor, and you keep running up against this brick wall, and when you figure out who put that brick wall there and what they're doing to you. That causes intense anger, and if there's no hope, why not go in the streets? Exactly. If you're going to go down, at least you're going to take some of the bastards with you. What's going to happen is the storming of the Bastille Day. That's going to happen again. 
Could well be. Could yeah. well be. Could yeah. well be. Yeah. Uh, let's get into this story with uh, with uh, Chris, and then we'll kind of go, we'll circle back because yeah, uh, this is this is very important. Yeah, yeah, and okay. also we have the uh, this issue of the strike. First off, uh, we have a technical shutting down of uh, of the oil through the strait there already, but the Iranians are smart. They didn't go and actually cut off the oil that it was promised. If Europe does this to themselves and commits economic suicide, which they look like they're going to, because July 1 will come on pretty quick, and in Egypt, uh, sorry, then Italy and Greece right they're away already, will collapse. They're already in desperate straits. Well, and it will yeah. absolutely sink Italy, Greece, Spain, Portugal, and who knows how, how there are many other countries. I don't know. I don't think they, they think that they, maybe they think they can print their way out of this mess. But I don't think so. Well, but I, that's not how the EU operates. That's not how the, the Eurozone, they, they don't print currency to the extent like it. It's not quite like the Federal Reserve. Uh, and, and they, look, the powers that be want an explosion. That They figured all this in, and they figured right. in World War Three. They want everything to be total chaos, total death and destruction, so when all is done, they can create their brand new world order with them at the top, and those of us that are left will be the peons that willingly will do what they tell us to do. Exactly. And, and by the way, empire. But by next January 1, which is 11 months away, we're on Groundhog Day, so we do wear see our shadow, the shadow of the mark of the beast coming? Yes, we do see our shadow. And what happens is that means winter, which is the New World Order, is coming. Winter is not going to be finished with us. We're going to end up in a nuclear winter shortly if they continue their craziness. But as Christians, we also know that beyond that, something wonderful is coming. Exactly. Unfortunately, it's on the other side of a... Of a uh, of a of a running through the uh, hot coals of what's coming near, and uh, there's no need for it. Again, the reason why this is here is because God has to cleanse the evil lest no flesh survive. Uh, let's go in uh, over to Chris now and talk about what's happening in San Onofre near Chicago and other reactors that are not back online since last year. What's going on, Chris? Okay, uh, I guess uh, to to rattle off the topics. Yeah, because we're going to go over in the next segment and get into more details because we only have a okay. few more minutes in this segment. San Onofre, new seismic uh, requirements for power plants, two plants that had a loss of off-site power, and frozen pipes at TEPCO for over at Fukushima. Okay, that, that is like the, the overall picture of what, what we can talk about tonight. Now, I don't know how exactly. far we get. Exactly, right. yeah. Yeah, I like the frozen pipes that have already frozen and leaked in there in TEPCO in Japan. And we already yes. talked about that those systems are not going to withstand the elements, and they're not. They're not. So, and they're okay. not. And we have extreme weather around the planet. The coldest temperatures in Alaska ever recorded across Russia and Serbia and Eastern Europe. Unbelievable. We're plunging into an ice age where these maniacs want to cut energy sources and get rid of, quote, carbon-generating energy like oil and gas as well. Back in a moment. time to give a full description of how bad this is. And again, I tell people one of the biggest challenges of the 21st century is called peak oxygen. And I'm the first, I believe, to talk about this. I know there's others try to claim that other people have been working in marine oceanography back since the early 70s. I was one of the first members to actually join Green, uh, the Greenpeace organization until they, they did wrong things, which is spraying seal pups with dye. And then I told them, tore up my membership and told them off. Uh, we have been hijacked by the pseudo-environmentalist movement by idiots like uh, Al Gore and his compatriots, which include, by the way, Ginrich, who is working with him, and Alvin Toffler. We have a situation where safe nuclear is possible. It is possible, but it's not been done. And that's why we have plants like San Onofre that were started in 1968 that should be completely refurbished with new technology, like, uh, like right now, I think because it's on a fault zone, it should actually have natural gas rather than nuclear. But there are places where you could have nuclear that is... Tokamak fusion reactors, which are basically non-nuclear isotope, which we do have the technology, safe thorium or pebble bed reactors that have been developed in South Africa, and get rid of all these old-style reactors, which is relatively straightforward. Yes, it's going to cost money. Yes, you need to have better backup power systems, 
But more and more of these plants are breaking down, not only in America, but you're not hearing the news in Eastern Europe where probably these old-style, Chernobyl-style nuclear reactors or graphite are breaking down all the time. In fact, their plan over there, and I mentioned on the show when I was on Rents last night, believe it or not, what they use is snails, and they have snails in the special growth box. And if the snails are having a bad day, you know your reactor is releasing radiation inside the lunchroom. That's what they do in, in, in this former Soviet Union. They don't have radiation detectors? They have them, but they more sensitive, believe it or not, are snails uh, than radiation detectors. Kind of like a parakeet in a... In yeah, a, it's, uh, the snails are having, if the snails are having a bad day, even if your radiation detector says they're not having, the radiation detector is okay, your lunch is now radioactive. Okay. Believe it or not. So, time so to Chris tell us. Uh, pick up your family and go on vacation. <laughs> exactly. Far, far time, away. time to get out with your Russian accent and leave the plant and, 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 uh, <laughs> and, and make sure you leave your clothes at the plant. Don't bring them with you. Um, Chris, tell us uh, the story. What's going on with San Onofre? Hey, What's going okay, on with Chicago? And all those other plants, like you mentioned, Calhoun, Fort Calhoun, that's still shut down since last year we talked about. Right, you know, and here, here's, but this is more of an internal event. It's not a big radioactive incident, but I'll tell you what it is. It's a huge financial problem. By now, a lot of your listeners have heard that San Onofre had a, had a, had an emergency. They had a tube, a tube leak in the steam generator. Unlike a boiling water reactor that makes steam in the reactor by the heat of the fuel directly in contact with the water, the, uh, pressurized water reactor takes the hot water from the, uh, from the reactor and it never boils in there. It's not supposed to boil in there. You keep it under pressure so it doesn't boil. What it does do, you pass it through tubes, and on the other side of the tubes is a, another, like a big tank that, that makes the steam with uh, clean water, absolutely pure, pristine water. You go through great lengths to keep that clean. But those tubes can leak through. And when you have that, what you end up doing is making radioactive <laughs> steam. Or, you know, in somewhat, we try to keep the primary system very, very clean. Okay, let me just tell you that right now. There should be no leakers from the fuel into the primary system. There's three different barriers. But uh, what happened was, in, uh, this, what, ha- what the big concern <laughs> is that uh, you did get some, some leakage of radiation when Unit 3 on January uh, uh, I have it right here, 31st, had to be taken offline because they had indication that there was a tube leak. And I can tell you something, as an operator, we practiced a lot for this particular event because it's basically a loss of coolant accident, all right, that you, that you can, um, you could, um, am I still there? Yes, you are. I think okay. we must have dropped uh, Tim. So we'll, okay, we'll try so, to get him back. So, uh, let, me just, let me just continue. So, so you have to do something with that because you can't lose inventory. And so you've got to do something, and it's kind of a tricky one. So uh, what happened was uh, they got a tube leak, and they're running with uh, a tube leak. They identified the tube leak. The operators did a good job. Kudos to that. We used to practice it all the time. But uh, the big problem is this was Unit 3. Unit 3 returned to full power in February 2011, okay, last year. Right. After it was refueled and its two aging, the old steam generators that were replaced, the plant's other reactor had similar work. The total cost was $670 million. That means this plant did not last a full year. Oh, no. <laughs> so, I mean, no, this is very bad. Now, these are... So, uh, so in other words, financially, and the thing is, our radiation detector did go up. So exactly. I don't know if it's Fukushima or if it's local, but I know that it, it was down around the low 30s, and it's been gradually rising, uh, but it took off yesterday, and now it's back up into the, into the 60s. So something's happening. So I, I'm suspicious that... We're getting a release, and of course, most people don't realize that all nuclear reactors, not some, all, of the old-style reactors release tritium and other isotopes. Yeah, out. tritium is something that's very difficult to contain just based on that it's hydrogen, and it can migrate through through metal, and it does. So uh, you're right. right. So you're always releasing, by the way, tritium pushes the what's called the codons of your DNA1 base pair and causes DNA intercalation because the van der Waals forces between the molecules. The best way to describe DNA is two sugar molecules in a spiral wrapped to get round water. And if it's heavy water, it displaces the codons, one base pair. So it can screw up your DNA. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Not well, funny. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's not funny. Serious stuff. It, but, it, you know, it, unit yeah. two, you know, unit three, did, did they shut it down, the operators... Let me just give you a, a brief rundown of what kind of actions that they had to take, and the plant personnel, not just the guys in the, in the control room and the guys out in the field and the operators. I'm saying what you have to do is you've got to recognize that you have a tube leak. You know, and there's a, it, depending on the size of the tube leak, there are various ways you do that. 
But if it's a really tiny leak that just it's just hiding there, the only way you really could find it is by chemistry. We have a really good chemistry department that goes ahead and draws samples and say, hey, you know what, your, your secondary chemistry is getting contaminated. You know, we, we could think you're having a tube leak. But there's other ways, too, like um, uh, you have a uh, uh, your, steam, your steam generator, uh, uh, the uh, feed reg valve from the steam generator isn't fully open anymore. That's a, that's a bad leak if it shows up that way because it means I'm maintaining steam generator level, but I'm not feeding it as much. Well, where's that water coming from? Well, it's coming from the reactor. But anyway, these guys have found out that, that a tube leak existed. They took appropriate action. They ensured the reactor became subcritical. They identified, that's the hard part, they identified which of the, which of the steam generators is the affected one. Sometimes that's not easy to do. They isolated the correct steam generator in this case, and they uh, initiated RCP trip strategy, and then they had to uh, start cooling down and depressurizing the reactor. So because that's the only way you could stop the water from blowing from the primary side, that would be the reactor side, into the secondary side through a hole in the tube is to depressurize the primary side. There's no valve to shut off or anything like that. So these guys did a, did a good job of doing that. But the bad part is... These are brand new steam generators at great cost. And the other thing, yes, there was a, there's a release. When, when you do trip the reactor, you get a, a, a short blast on the atmospheric dump valves if you're a greater than 557 degrees uh, TAV. And that, that's just the way that reactor works, and that has to get it right now. It's called a quick open signal on a combustion engineering plant. Uh, I was licensed on one ex almost exactly like San Onofre. So, um, so the, the big problem is, Unit, that was Unit 3. Unit 2, ironically, is in an outage right now, and one of the things that you do with their brand new steam generators that had been running for, you know, like 18 months, they go in and they start looking at the tubes. And you have to, and it's a very elaborate process, and I've also done that. And what you do is uh, you send an eddy current probe. It's all done by uh, electronic because you can't really get up in there. It's a, it's a tight fit, and they're inside tubes. And so what they're finding is, there are problems on the Unit 2 steam generator tubes. Well, darn it, this thing's also a brand new steam generator, and they're getting what they're calling wastage on those tubes. Well, I would expect if I So, think Chris, the, you're looking at two, two units that are in the 100 million plus range, and they're less than two years old, and they're both junk. Broken. I, yeah. You know, I, this, this is why well, I, I, I mean, I'll be going out on a limb by saying, you know, this is what I think it's going to come to. I think it's going to come to a lot of finger pointing. It has to. It's going to come to allegations, litigation between uh, Mitsubishi, where these, the ones who built this, these new steam generators. And, uh, I'm, I'm, and the more that, uh, if you look at Informable's report, he picked up where a, uh, a defect was actually reported by Mitsubishi and San Onofre accepted them anyway. I don't know if that has anything to do with this. But yeah. you're looking at some uh, financial concern burden, and maybe. And, and, the, and the other danger, by the way, is when you decommission plants, if you don't do it properly because you're shorter in your budget, that's when there's actually more danger of radiation release than when it's properly operated, isn't it? Yeah, big contamination danger. As a uh, prelude to our, our continued discussion about this, because again, the danger is that any attack on Iran will be a nuclear war. And the only country that's deployed nuclear weapons to attack any other country in the world is America. And they're planning on doing it again, although they promised after the Second World War they wouldn't. We also have the policies of mutual assured destruction, and we have a nation that is now seeing the Iran-Iraq war and, and destroying millions of their own citizens, if you ever travel to Iran. And you realize that they have big allies 240 billion dollar contract with China alone for ethylene oil and gas direct alliances with five different standard republics including Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, etc. and the Kurds and no PKK the Kurdistan Republic which will rise out of the ashes of what's coming it includes most of uh, eastern Turkey all of northern Iraq and uh, northwestern Iran is all Kurdistan sitting on the largest deposit on land of oil in the world bigger than the Bakken in America the only thing that rivals it basically is the southwest end of the Dead Sea and the area up in the Prudhoe Bay area in Alaska. Now the fact is the Iranians are getting ready, but if the Bashar reactor is hit, and it's, un it's unnervingly close to Georgia by an attack by Shakash Philly and American Israeli bases there, the radiation release from the Bashar reactor, which is uh, fully fueled now, will kill, and this is estimated by our, our Physicians for Social Responsibility, estimated it could kill between 30 and 32 million people in the first month alone.
just from the radiation. That's added to Fukushima, which is, by the way, getting worse. We calculated out, and I want you to renew this uh, statement, Tim, that the amount of radiation was initially after November, December, estimated to increase in January, after the latest earthquake, January 1, to now be 10 million becquerels more per hour being released from Fukushima Prefecture from the uh, Senate, those reactors. And now we're dealing with reactors across America that are still in shutdown mode, reactors in Europe that are probably releasing radiation that they periodically will try to blame on um, Fukushima. Well, uh, but Dr. Maybe Bill, what's so interesting is a, a point of vulnerability, uh, and, and Chris, uh, jump in here in a minute, uh, is the fact that these power plants require outside uh, electrical power to run all their systems and so forth. Now, they have double and triple redundancies. That is, they, the systems are hardened. Uh, they have diesel generators with a large amount of fuel and so forth. But we have never have situations where they basically the, the diesels have to kick on. And now we've had several. And it, it kind of begs the question, is somebody getting in not to the software, the, the, the nuclear power plant itself, but getting in and messing with the control systems for the, the electrical power that are heading into the, the, the power plant. Because there, and if, if that's the case, who's doing it and what does that, or, you know, what does that point to? Yeah, in other words, is there cybernetic attacks that could be causing things like San Onofre or our electrical system? We know Tianjin Chinese were able to attack in two and a half years ago into our power grid in America. We know that the smart grid system makes it even more liable. How uh, far can they get into the system in terms of power, uh, you know, the power control for the plant or main breakers? Maybe not into the full plant, but uh, we're vulnerable, aren't we? If, if we've got an outside uh, someone operating the breakers remotely, that, that would be really bad. And it, it, it doesn't have to be a nuclear power plant. It could be some coal fire plant. It could be a dam. And there was uh, an incident where a dam was attacked, and a hydropower project was, uh, was misoperated or attacked either intentionally or, or, or even, even if it was an accident so, uh, or a mistake. So this is Byron, but on July, uh, July, excuse me, ooh, boy, on, uh, on uh, Friday the 13th in January, the Wolf Creek plant went down. It's still not up yet, and they, they have a mysterious Where, problem. Where is that located, by Kansas, the way? Kansas, yeah, I mean, it's in Kansas. Yeah, again, these are all peppered all over the country, too, and some of them are near fault lines like San Onofre, and others are in areas, and these are older reactors that are not properly being maintained, and they're all breaking down now. And yeah. they're not back up. What about well, they, the, uh, this, this, this is the, the switch power yard. went down, right, Chris? Yeah, this is the, the switch yard. Out, out of the, out of, this is what it feeds. And, you know, the, the interesting part about this, you know, I looked at it and said, well, gee, you know, the, usually if I see something like this, and I look at events all the time, every single day, I would see there was a hurricane that day. It was an earthquake that day. There were tornadoes like, like, like we already experienced at Browns Ferry. But uh, this was a beautiful day. And now, uh, you know, Wolf Creek is, is offline, and, they, and the NRC had to send a special investigation team i have no reason i have no no, no further uh, information on that but it's still down and they haven't found a root cause as to why the breakers opened and they and, and they uh, operated that way so i figured well that's kind of weird and i tried to touch on that last week but this week uh all of a sudden out of, out of nowhere uh the byron nuclear power plant in uh, near chicago also shut down because it had a switch yard problem that may involve an insulator breaking off due to, which I, I find that hard to believe because uh, the insulators, they undergo a maintenance program. I know it very well to prevent a, a breakage. It's kind of rare that they do break. And it caused a, uh, a problem with a transformer. But also, uh, I don't know if there's a cause and effect because sometimes uh, when I read the reports on it, it looked like they were getting a degraded voltage on inside the plant. Now, if they had a, if they had a, a an insulator failure, you'd probably lose all the voltage right away. You wouldn't get an oscillating voltage. So it could be something taking charge of a tap changer in a, uh, or a problem with a tap changer inside of a transformer. This is a heads up to the guys listening because uh, that's where I would look right away. And uh, since I am a troubleshooter. So, uh, so the Byron plant uh, lost power on uh, January 30th. And it's still not running. And the NRC sent an augmented inspection team out that way. So, uh, 
uh, and you're looking at some other problems. Now, that play, the difference between the Byron the, play... This, these events are normally extraordinarily rare. Clear well, day, yeah. no, you know, we're not, we're not, I'm excluding, you know, hurricanes and all that kind of stuff. But just for a normal event for this to happen and, and the, the plant to have to go on its backup systems, for these reasons, this is very rare, correct? Yeah, well, the interesting part about Wolf Creek, at a single-unit plant. It lost power, but it restored power within a few hours, and they got some power back from the off-site, so they didn't need the diesels after about... But, and it's a good thing, because one of their diesels had a problem. See, they have two of them, and one of them actually even had a problem, and there was another problem there, too, that was kind of severe. And I, I don't want to get into it right now, but uh, uh, the Byron plant was on its diesels. They did not restore power, even though there's two units there, and, and this is really weird, because... One unit was still running. I mean, it was it didn't experience. They have separate switch yards and stuff. So this was pretty specific to only one particular of the two units that are side by side. So uh, unit two was on the diesel generators for a really long time. In my opinion, the mission time for the diesel generators would be like 24 hours. Yeah. Well, this was on greater than 24 hours before they restored any kind of pathway to off-site now, power. We've just got a couple minutes left. I want to summarize how what, what we've talked about in the last hour and also earlier in hour number one. What we're dealing with is a situation where they're not maintaining proper uh, provision of electrical energy to drive our industry and support our homes and our culture and our lifestyle. The globalists know that we're passing through the galactic plane and have been for over 15 years. We will for another 15 years. That is going to increase volcanism, earthquakes, earth changes, and climate shift. We're heading into an ice age which is no longer in dispute. It's just the way it is. The global warming fools that believe carbon dioxide to death gas realize it's part of what's called a carbon cycle. We need to stop polluting when we're not, and that means stopping polluting from nuclear reactors, which are older designs. All these reactors need to be changed, and it's going to cost trillions of dollars to change them all. But guess what? Nuclear has got to be part of our future because it causes zero destruction, zero, zero consumption of oxygen. It's not a matter of whether or not we have limitless or virtually limitless carbon-based fuels or that we pollute and that carbon dioxide is good for the plants. Is it how fast can the plants regenerate to generate oxygen? And yes, there's a amount of stretch, but as we pollute the oceans and cut down the forests, the capacity for the lungs of the earth to generate oxygen from the CO2 is reduced. So we're going to hit a wall call I call peak oxygen. And that means we have to have energy producing technologies such as solar, wind, uh, wave technology, nuclear fusion, and safe nuclear in our future, or we're going to consume oxygen that we need to breathe or to drive our internal combustion engines. Can and I hit uh, we're one not, more point? We're, we're, not de we're not dealing with this. We're not dealing with the fact that our older reactors all pollute. Go to your okay. point. The point was the new seismic study that was released also this week, just like yesterday. Yes. About uh, about the basis, uh, the design basis for nuclear plants. It's changed, and uh, I send you an article on it. And you'll see that there are what used to be seismically quiet areas. There are 96 reactors on now. Now areas that cannot be called seismically quiet. Out of 104, we have 96 sitting on non-quiet areas. This report, if I've been going through it, I asked Ann to help me with it. It's like thousands of pages. But yeah, give me a uh, summary of it because uh, people don't understand that the nuclear age in Japan, out of 55 reactors, only five are going. Yep. We are going to, in the 21st century, hit what's called peak oxygen. Yes, you can use a certain amount of fuel, and yes, the Earth will generate for the carbon cycle oxygen, but if you keep polluting the oceans and cutting down the forests, the world cannot, because of the carbon cycle, regenerate that oxygen. Thank you, gentlemen. Amazing show today.